Welcome to October. October 1st, and I am finishing up a uh, warm-up because I'm going to uh, kind of see where my fitness is with a 5K time trial out here on the uh, local junior high track. I do a 5K time trial fairly frequently, although this is the first one I've done in almost a year uh, due to the hip injury that I had in the spring and uh, just coming back from that. So the goal today is to just basically test my fitness, see where I'm at, and use that as a baseline for uh, training for the next few months, and also to test, uh, test my hip, see where it is. And the third reason is to set what's called a critical power number for my stride foot pod. I do use a stride uh, foot pod which measures power. I use that primarily for intervals and harder sessions because once you establish a good baseline power, it allows you to really dial in those harder efforts. I'm about 20, 22 minutes or so into this warm up. Zone two, I'm going to uh, do a little stretching and then uh, see how fast I can knock out the 5K on the, uh, on the little track. <laughs> but in a good way. Oh, I'm done. Uh, here are the, uh, the final numbers. Just over 5K by one one hundredth of a mile. 2218, 708, but more importantly, you see average power, 285. So that's what I'm gonna use. That'll be my new critical power. Uh, within the stride power, running with power ecosystem. So I'll be able to use that to gauge my uh, harder workouts between now and probably the end of the year. Although my plan is to run the Run Like Mad 5K four weeks from today, October 29th. That's a fun race. You finish on the, uh, on the 50 yard line of Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta. So fun race, nice course. Good uh, participants. It's uh, we're put on by the Atlanta Track Club, which I've been a member of for about five years. So very good. Okay, get some warm down, cool down in, and then uh, do a little analysis of the uh, of the time trial on the computer and show you kind of what what metrics I look at and what you can look at no matter what you do to test your fitness, whether it's running, cycling, swimming, walking, whatever. So. Back in a bit. Okay, it is the next day. I got back from the track yesterday and just got busy with uh, everything else. But uh, woke up this morning. I went for a nice, easy run. I'm a little, little stiff, but not sore. So all in all, very, very good. Uh, like I said at the end of the run, I was pretty happy with uh, the result. And as I posted on the comment on my Strava, I said. It's the first extended hard effort in 10 months. So I was very happy with the result. It was a bit faster than I expected. So all the zone two is working, but need to do more race quality intervals in order to get faster, but still plenty of time for that. So bottom line is I was very happy uh, with the result. I did a little better than I thought and uh, I'm looking forward to using that fitness that I have now to help me uh, get a little bit faster as I get through the rest of the year. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, the Stride Power Center and I will be able to analyze the uh, run for you and show you some of the things I look at to determine if it was a worthwhile 5K time trial or not. Okay, I've got the uh, analysis software uh, Stride Power Center open, so let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, at the time trial. All right, so here's the calendar, uh, the runs I did yesterday, October 1st. Let's go ahead and click on 
the run, which was the time trial. And you'll see when this opens up that there's a lot of numbers. So I'll go through and explain the numbers for you and give you a little bit of a sense for what I look for to determine if it was a good uh, time trial or good effort or not. So, okay. So when you open this up, take a look here. Uh, so it's got the map over there. The track is roughly five laps per mile. So about 16 laps for the 5K. And then you've got this chart with time across the bottom and then these metrics that are being measured. So right now I've got power in yellow and pace in blue. I'm going to add my heart rate to that. And so what I try to do when I do a time trial like this is to start off at a good hard effort but not too hard. I don't want to go out too fast, blow up, and uh, crash and burn. So I want to go out at a good solid effort and try to pick up the pace the second half of the race or the time trial to see if I can get a little bit faster. So that was my goal. So I started off here and within the first few minutes or so, about a minute, two minutes in, you see that my heart rate is about 150 and my power in the yellow is 288. So I maintain that pretty consistently all the way through my heart rate 157, 158. Then the last mile or so, the last seven, eight minutes, my heart rate starts going up. You start seeing 161, 162. You start seeing the power go up to 290, 300 and finish up. So it gets a little, little faster. My heart rate is going higher and I'm putting more power down to the track the last mile or so. So let's see what that looks like in terms of distance, pace. So the first mile, you'll see I did 716 for the first mile, which was about what I wanted to go out at. Somewhere around 715, I thought that was a pace I could maintain and maybe get a little faster. So the first mile was 716, second mile was 713, third mile was seven minutes, and the fourth was that 0.12 I did in 48 seconds, which was an average of 636 a mile. So. I started off at a good pace, not as fast as I was able to run last year at this time, uh, but I started off at a good solid pace and I was able to pick up the pace, especially at the end, which was my goal. So we go back and we take a look at it. And so overall, you will see that, um, that my power was about that 280 watts. My heart rate was about 150, 155, and then got over 160 at the end. So by looking at this, I achieved my goal of testing my fitness and going as fast as I felt I could without blowing up. Could I have gone a little faster? I think so, but not from a physical um, conditioning side. I think the thing that was limiting me was the mental side. Um, for any of you that have ever done a race or a hard effort like that, it's really hard physically, but your brain starts playing tricks on you. And part of that is getting used to working at a high level. And I haven't really done that in a year. So this is one of those things that not only tests my body, but also tests my, my mind. And the more I do this as I get back into it, I'll be able to push myself a little bit more. I think I could have gone maybe a little faster in the middle, uh, I just need to learn to feel more comfortable with that. So that's something that will come back as I get a little bit faster. So let me talk a little bit about training with power because most of you maybe have never heard about that. Um, it's a concept that I became familiar with when I was riding road bikes uh, eight or ten years ago. We all had power meters on our wheels which was able to generate or measure the amount of watts or power that we were generating. Well in the last few years uh, that has kind of come in come into the running realm and they now have power meters that you can put on your shoe. So I use the Stride power meter. It's a little foot pod that fits on the front of your shoe. I will do a more in-depth video on Stride and how that works. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and uh, click the bell for notifications to be notified when I do post that video. But essentially, power is, uh, think of it as the amount of energy that you're transferring to the ground to move you forward. And that is something that is independent of temperature or elevation or heart rate. Power is what power is. So what I have found is especially for intervals and races and hard efforts, if I have an accurate way of determining how much power I can 
transfer to the road to move me forward on a consistent basis. That helps me pace my, my efforts and my races much more effectively. So no matter whether I'm going uphill or downhill, I'm able to maintain that same level of power and not uh, go into the red zone, uh, red line, overcook myself and blow up. By maintaining a level of power that is high enough but not too high, I'm able to kind of dose out my effort over the race. So that's the main advantage. I'll post a link in the description to, uh, to the Stride uh, foot pod. They've got a lot of good articles about what that is. And like I said, I'll do a little bit more detailed video. But for me, in my training, I find that power works really well for the intervals and for the, the races. Uh, the basic zone two that I do 75-80% of my time is, that's heart rate based and that's a nice easy effort. But when you start pushing yourself, heart rate kind of becomes almost unimportant because at the end of the day, it's how much power you can put down for a certain amount of time that determines how you do. So that's why I use power. So I hope you found that analysis helpful. Bottom line is I did a little better than I thought. Now, how can you use this type of strategy for yourself in your own training. Now, I don't think that by any means you have to run a race or enter the Tour de France or anything like that to test your fitness. But I think it's important to kind of see where you are from time to time over the course of your training, just to check in with yourself and see if you are making progress. So no matter what you do, whether it's walking, running, cycling, uh, swimming, you should be able to test yourself a few times over the course of the year to see where you are. So if you are a, a runner, you can do something like I do, just find a time trial, a track, and run the same distance uh, multiple times over the course of the year and see if you are getting faster. That's usually gonna indicate you're, you're getting a little more fit. If you're a walker, find a, a route that you're comfortable walking and just test yourself. See if you can walk that route a little bit faster. If you're a cyclist, find an outdoor course that has uh, that is repeatable and test yourself there to see are you able to cover the same distance in less time or are you able to go farther for the same amount of time. Anything like that that you can test yourself a few times over the course of the year just to give yourself a quick check-in to let yourself know where you are and where your fitness is is a very good thing to do no matter your age or your level. It's a way just to kind of validate that what you're doing is uh, is helping you. And if you're doing all that zone two and you're mixing in some intervals uh, that 15 or 20 percent of the time, over time your fitness is going to increase. So it's important to see that improvement by testing yourself. Okay, now speaking of, I'd love to hear from you in the uh, comments uh, if you are doing anything to test your, your fitness or your performance over time, go ahead and uh, share it with us down in the comments. I'd love to, to see what everyone is doing. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button and uh, click the bell for notifications and go ahead and nudge the, uh, that thumbs up. That's a great way to spread the word out there amongst uh, the YouTube world about what we are doing here at Life Maximus. And that is it. If you want to learn a little bit more about kind of the overall training philosophy I have, check this video out over here. And uh, that's it for now. Like I said, until next time, thanks for watching and be well.